This is the David Lloyd Tennis School at Intersports.com. There are two types of serve that use spin, the top spin serve and the slice serve. Most players add spin because it makes the serve more reliable and easier to control. It also allows you to vary the serves you hit during a game, which makes it more difficult for your opponent to anticipate which serve is coming. In this guide, we'll show you how to hit a slice serve. Many players use a slice serve as their second serve because the added control makes it easier to keep the ball in court. Getting the second serve in court is vital. After all, if you land the ball out of the service box with your second serve, you lose the point. The slice serve should be easier to master than the topspin serve. It's a progression from the basic serve, so it's probably the best serve variation to move on to once you've mastered the basic flat serve. When you compare it to a flat serve, the added spin on a slice serve makes the ball bounce lower and then slide either into your opponent's body in one serve box or away from them in the other court. This added spin makes it more difficult for your opponent to anticipate and return the ball. Let's start with the grip. The grip that's used for the slice serve is the continental grip, the same grip that you'll use for a basic serve. The starting position for the slice serve is also the same, just behind the baseline, close to the center mark for singles and a wider position for doubles. If you're right-handed, your left foot will be closer to the baseline and for left-handed players, it's the right foot. Place your feet in a comfortable position, about shoulder width apart, and with both feet a little less than 45 degrees to the baseline. Your weight should be evenly balanced with perhaps a little more weight on your front foot. As you improve, you'll probably start with your weight more on the front foot and then move it to the back foot as you start the serve action. Now let's look at throwing the ball up. If you're learning to hit a slice serve for the first time, you might find it easier to throw the ball slightly away from your racket arm. So, looking from behind, for right-handed players, this means the ball will be further to the right, and left-handed players, the ball will be further left. For many experienced players, the ball toss for a slice serve will be exactly the same as the ball toss for their basic serve, higher than a full swing of the racket, and far enough in front that if you didn't hit the ball, it would land just in front of the baseline. Having the same ball toss as the basic serve makes it difficult for your opponent to read which serve you're going to hit. So, as you improve, you can try to throw the ball in the same place as your basic flat serve. But for now, just concentrate on mastering the technique of the slice serve. What makes the slice serve different to a flat serve is the swing part of the racket head and the action of the strings as they contact the outside of the ball rather than the back of it. This action of the racket head puts side spin or slice on the ball. If you're right-handed, it'll make the ball move from right to left as it leaves the racket, and if you're left-handed, it'll move from left to right. This side spin causes the ball to bounce to the side as it lands and move either away from your opponent or move into their body, rather than moving in a straight line. This makes it more difficult for your opponent to hit the ball. As you hit the ball, the racket face should make contact on the outside of it rather than the back. As this example with a left-handed player shows, the slice contact makes the ball rotate and move further to the right after it bounces. And with a right-handed player, the slice contact makes the ball rotate and move further to the left after it bounces. But if the right-handed player hits a slicer from the other side of the court, rather than moving away from the receiving player, it moves towards their body. Similarly, for a left-handed player, serving to the juice court with a slice serve will result in the serve moving towards the opponent rather than moving away from them. Once you've made contact with the ball, your racket arm will come across your body a little more vigorously than for a flat serve. The momentum of the serve action will probably move you forward and over the baseline. As always, remember to recover quickly by regaining your balance and moving into the ready position so you're all set to receive the next shot. Looking at a flat serve and slice serve from behind, you can see the difference in the two service actions, particularly at the point where the racket face contacts the ball. But if you look at the two serves from the position of the receiver, you can see how similar they look and how difficult you can make it for your opponent to know which serve to anticipate. OK, so that was the slice serve. Let's recap. To begin with, throw the ball slightly away from your serving arm and far enough in front that if you didn't hit it, it would land in front of the baseline. As you improve, practice hitting your slice serve with the same ball toss as your flat serve. This will make it more difficult for your opponent to read which serve is coming. 
As you swing through and make contact with the ball, the racket face should make contact with the outside rather than the back of the ball. The slice action places side spin on the ball, which will cause it to move either towards or away from your opponent, depending on whether you're right or left-handed and which side of the court you're serving to. As always, recover quickly and get back into the ready position as soon as you can. So now that you have the slice serve mastered, be sure to check out all the other useful video guides, playing tips and fitness advice at intersport.com. Intersport.com, the home of world-class sports coaching online.